Hello again, this is Arden Kirkland with another video for week one of the D4L Community Module. Here I want to start by introducing you to the 1990 rule. Jacob Nielsen, who's considered internationally to be the guru of web page usability, analyzed participation rates in a variety of large scale online communities and found that only about 1% of participants, sometimes known as super users, create the majority of the content. Meanwhile, about 9% contribute only intermittently, for some maybe only one post, and the remaining 90% don't contribute content at all, but simply view the content from others. Now that 90% are often referred to as lurkers. These statistics have been confirmed by other researchers as well. The negative connotation of the term lurker goes back to earlier days of digital communities, communicating by way of bulletin board systems accessed through phone lines. The lines into the system were limited, so contributors were critical of those who tied up the line to read without contributing back. With current online systems, however, there's no similar liability in having a large number of users consume content without producing any. So, what to do about lurkers in a learning environment? Well, it's important to consider their barriers to participation and try to offer alternative forms of participation. Actually, the post cited here from Nielsen has some suggestions for that, so you may want to look at that in the additional resources. However, it's also important to recognize that that 90% of lurkers can still derive value as learners, even if they're not actively contributing. So the trick sometimes is about getting that other 10% to be contributing, at least. Now let's think about different face-to-face -face learning scenarios you've been in, either as a teacher or as a student. Are those figures that different? Certainly in a large lecture class, the percentage of active student participation is going to be very small. In a smaller class, you may have better luck. Hence, it's often a useful practice to put students in smaller groups to encourage more discussion or other kinds of participation. Now that's as true online as it is in a face-to-face -face setting. But online, there may be more barriers to that, especially in a mostly asynchronous class and especially where people are in vastly different time zones. Any individual student's participation is going to depend on their learning styles and their social comfort, so it's important to provide alternative methods of participation that will meet more diverse student needs. In the next video, we'll talk more about motivation to participate.